when every move of yours is meditation mm. life becomes a prayer my very good friend from pune and uh, his name is deepak and deepak abhi hum kahan ja rahe hain batayenge kuch now we are outside osho gardens of pune this right. is basically got two sides once you go inside you will probably seeing all the couples sitting in corners and kissing each other <laughs> basically those couples will not be belonging or following so osho mm -hmm. but this place is quite famous and quite good enough for quite couples. famous for this place is quite famous for people coming in and having a sweet romance a short sweet romance inside wow <laughs> that's great chalo let's go this person here on the road was telling us that we're not allowed to film inside tu kar lega manage kuch boliyo na marathi mein ya whatever we will definitely try talking to them thing they are asking me to stop filming because the camera is not allowed inside kya hua deepak camera nahi allow allow abhi dikhe samne dikhe kya yaar as i wasn't allowed to carry my camera inside i couldn't film anything in there but you guys can take my word for it the garden is simply divine hello guys this is my second last night in pune and as you can see i am not in that vintage hotel of mine i've moved once again and i hope this was the last time this is my fourth hotel you guys yes and would you believe that finally i have a bathtub uh, my happiness seriously knows no bounds <laughs> i've been meeting such 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 amazing souls and you know but one has been facilitating the trip like crazy like i just cannot imagine that i have i think i've stayed in almost every kind of property that is available here in pune This is how um, the room is. Uh, the mattress is so comfy and so soft and so springy. It's amazing, you know. <laughs> Chocolates, okay. And this is me. And uh, yes, this is this little room. You have a separate bedding area. with that rain shower thingy going on and yes this very spacious bathroom and this very huge mirror this property is a kilometer away 1 kilometer away from the ashram somebody's at the door let me see belong to a very small community called the Parsees 
and um, Osho was my neighbor in Bombay. Wow. And then when he moved to Pune, mm -hmm. uh, I got myself a place behind his. A fascinating thing about Osho in those days was two things were absolutely mind-boggling. One was that never in the history of man had anybody spoken so extensively, whether it was Christ, Buddha, Mahavir, Langtasu, Changtasu, Heraclitus, Zen, Sufi, Christ, Zarathustra, and all the Indian classics. And the second most fascinating thing was that before Osho and his movement really started going, the biggest place in the world for the new wave movement, the human growth potential movement, was this Esalen Institute in Big Sur, California. All right. Now, all the great therapists were also plagued by the eternal verities like life after life, life after death. Now, in the West, their, their training was that you've got to go out into the world and make a success of yourself and prove you're somebody. In the East, it's you go in and realize you're nobody, the yeah. death of the ego. So, all these top therapists had got to the apex of their sciences, but they were still, as I said earlier, plagued with questions mm. of... So they were turning eastwards. Right. And this became then the biggest center in the world for the new wave. When was this? In the 70s? In the 70s. Yeah. In the late 70s, early 80s, before he left for Oregon. Right. So, uh, when Woodlands became too small, right. my Yog Lakshmi came to Pune and uh, went to see this property. Mm -hmm. And as she walked in, there was an almond tree yes. and one almond fell on her toe. I think on her lap, no? <coughs> Okay. What I know. I think I've read this somewhere. Okay. <coughs> yeah. And the minute that happened, she knew it was a that sign. Was the sign. Yeah. And in those days, hmm. as I've mentioned also, that all these properties belonged to many of the old Parsi and rulers right. of different states, and all of them were reasonably well off. But miraculously, one after the other, adjacent to the ashram, were fell vacant. Ah. So they were able to also. Uh, so there was uh, Krishna House. I think that's the first. That's the first one, yeah. And behind that, where Osho was, Lao Tzu House, mm. then Jesus, Jesus House. house. And then where the old uh, auditorium uh, was before hmm? Buddha. Buddha. Where there is Buddha Grove now? It's the same place, right? At a beautiful tent. Achha. Wow. No, no mosquito net all around. Uh -huh. Which was known as the largest mosquito net in the world. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Can you imagine the size of that mosquito? And even the kitchen area was somewhere else. Yeah, they the number of symptoms and they get strong uh -huh. shifting. Yeah. At that time, especially on the festival days, hmm. there has to be minimum three different kitchens, three different restaurants hmm. and long queue. And on any given day there were like five thousand people here. Or more Excellent. than that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. It was a different world. Mm. I mean, it was just all you saw 
mm. were sunny seas and orange or ochre. Right. It's a different word. And at that time, um, I was very active uh, in a little bit of politics. And, All right. Uh, so uh, my and the ashram had several problems with municipality, police, visas. Right. So my job was to try and iron that out. And the problems were so many that in the end I just told my Yog Lakshmi, who was really the person that made the ashram what it is. Yeah. She was Osho's secretary, driver, everything, his first sannyas, sannyasi, my Yog Lakshmi. So I worked very closely with her mm. and then I said, Ma, now these the best thing I can do is take you to Delhi with me and introduce you to Mrs. Gandhi. Mm. And uh, it was a beautiful meeting. All I can say is that, that, as Osho said, that each one of us are born with the seed of divinity in us. So all a master can really do is act as a catalyst and ignite that seed and then your growing process starts. Right. Every seed that's ever been immersed has blossomed. Existence has given you the ground, the mud, the water, the sunshine. It's happened to every seed in existence. Why won't it happen to you? Mm. So Basically, what it is, is that, as I said, a living master is this catalyst and then you spend the rest of your life growing when every move of yours is meditation, mm. life becomes a prayer. Osho also always said that it's very easy to meditate in idyllic circumstances like being in an ashram. Right. The true meditation comes when you're in the marketplace. You become like a lotus which mm. is in the water mm. and yet above the water. Enough for today.